It has been said that the Ming Dynasty of China, which ruled for a total of 276 years, beginning in 1368 and ending in 1644 AD, was one of the greatest eras of orderly government and social stability in the history of humankind. This dynasty rose to prominence as a world-conquering power, completing significant ocean journeys decades before Christopher Columbus and publishing works of literature centuries before the advent of the printing press in Britain. There was a murkier, more horrific side to this dynasty, despite the fact that it was lauded for its consistency and its capacity to innovate. The cruelty that was practiced by the Ming emperors knew no bounds and was directed squarely at the imperial concubines. Some Ming emperors had as many as 9,000 concubines, many of whom had been abducted from their homes and were kept in gilded prisons where they were not allowed to leave unless they were called to the bed of the emperor. Due to the prevalence of the barbarous practice of footbinding during this historical period, the hobbled women were unable to flee or even walk into the bedchambers of the emperor. As a result, they were forced to be carried naked to the expecting man in order to fulfill their duty. The Obsessive Founder The Hongwu Emperor is widely regarded as one of the most important and influential rulers in Chinese history. He is also credited with establishing the Ming Dynasty, which is named after him. He began his life as a homeless monk traveling around China, but over time he rose to become one of the most powerful warlords in all of Asia. In 1368, under his guidance, the Mongol invaders who had controlled China for the previous century were finally driven out of the country. He took the name Ming, which is the Mandarin word meaning bright, once he had successfully established his empire. On the other hand, his cruelty was not limited to the battlefield. Concubines were held captive and tortured behind closed doors as he exercised his dominance over them. Because of his pride and jealousy, he felt the need to exert control over every area of their life. He instituted the practice of having the concubines either put to death, coerced into committing suicide, or buried alive with the emperor after he passed away so that he could maintain power over them even when he was no longer alive. This horrible custom was carried on by two of the Hongwu emperor's successors, namely Yongle and the Hongxi emperor. The Zhengtong emperor mercifully ended the practice by including it in his will in the year 1464, which meant that the concubines of the other emperors just had to worry about falling out of favor as opposed to losing their lives. Mass Slaughter in the Forbidden City In addition to Nanjing, the Yongle Emperor is credited with establishing a second capital for China and giving it the name Beijing, which is what the city is known as even to this day. In this location, he constructed the Forbidden City, which was the Imperial Chinese Palace in Beijing from the years 1420 to 1912. In spite of the authoritarian nature of his rule, his reign brought about significant changes in the areas of education, economics, and the military. However, there is ample evidence to show that he engaged in a number of brutal acts. There were allegations in 1421, not long after Yongle inaugurated the Forbidden City on New Year's Day, that one of the Emperor's favorite concubines had committed suicide because she was having an affair with a palace eunuch as a result of the Emperor's inability to have sexual relations with his concubines since he was impotent. The humiliated Emperor immediately put to work silencing everyone who was involved in the situation as well as anyone who knew about it. He then picked up 2,800 ladies from this harem and had them all murdered by slicing. He then told the others of the palace that the concubine in issue had been poisoned. Girls as young as 12 years old were among those put to death during this widespread execution. In spite of the fact that this massacre is not included in the official record, there is a written account of it available. This narrative was written by Lady Kiwi, another one of his concubines, who was absent from the palace at the time. On the day of Yongle's funeral, Lady Kui and the other 15 of the emperor's remaining concubines were executed by being hung from white silk nooses in the hallways of the Forbidden City. Alternative Obsessions Zheng De, the 10th Ming monarch, ascended to power in 1505, at which point he became disenchanted with his concubines and became fixated on the life of an ordinary person. He would go to the local brothels under a false name and throughout the night when no one was looking. 
However, this did not stop him from amassing such a large number of concubines that it is reported that many of them died of starvation, since there was not enough food to feed them, nor enough place to lodge them all. The reign of Zheng De, according to the opinions of a great number of historians, was a major factor in the collapse of the Ming dynasty. Jia Jing, his successor, was preoccupied with the search for an elixir that would grant him endless life. He was under the impression that the essential component of this elixir was the menstrual blood of virgins. During his reign, he issued an order that thousands of young women be picked up and brought to the Forbidden City so that they may be harvested. Mulberries and dew were the only things allowed in their diets, which served the purpose of keeping their bodies clean. Because of this inhumane diet, a great number of people perished from famine. However, in the year 1542, a group of 16 concubines rebelled against their master. The Renyan Plot was the name given to their unsuccessful attempt to overthrow the tyrannical emperor. During a night that the emperor had spent in the rooms of his favorite concubine, the consort Duan, also known as Lady Cao, the Alice women took action against the emperor. After the concubine and her attendants left, the emperor was left alone and the other ladies in the palace took advantage of this chance to launch an assault on him. While the other women restrained the emperor, one of the concubines attempted to suffocate him with a ribbon she had taken from her hair. They then attempted to suffocate him by tying a silk curtain rope around his neck. However, they made the mistake of tying the wrong kind of knot. Thus, they were unable to tighten the noose and complete the task. The fear that ensued among the conspirators caused one of them to alert the Empress Fang of the attempted assassination. The Empress took matters into her own hands and sadly had the palace women put to death by slow slicing, often known as death by a thousand cuts, while the Emperor remained comatose until the following afternoon. Additionally, the families of these women were put to death. The One Good Ming there was at least one Ming emperor who kept his philandering to a minimum and was never noted as being cruel to the people who worked in his palace. This emperor stood out among many who were cruel. Hong Zi, the ninth Ming emperor and the father of Zheng De, witnessed the kind of life that resulted from having several marriages, thousands of concubines, and harshness towards everyone. His father, Emperor Cheng Hua, was fixated on pornography, and was so preoccupied with it that he neglected his throne, which gave eunuchs the ability to wield enormous authority. As a result of her resentment over Hong Zhi's decision to choose Cheng Hua as his successor, Hong Zhi's favorite concubine, Lady Wan, ordered the assassination of Hong Zhi's mother, a consort by the name of Lady Ji. Lady Ji was Hong Zhi's mother. Prior to this, Lady Wan had killed as many of the emperor's children as she could find, and she had frequently killed their mothers as well, all in an effort to garner favor for her unborn son, who would never be born. As a result of this, Cheng Hua was aware of the potential for harm that would result from having an excessive number of concubines and granting them power and prominence within the royal palace. As a consequence of this, he only had two empresses who succeeded each other, and there is no evidence to imply that he was as cruel, evil, or violent as any of the previous Ming emperors. We hope you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about what civilization or time period we should talk about. Also, watch another video here.